Okay, so let me talk. Hmm. I'm going to just start touch on this. I'm going to come back to the introduction for this uh, later on, but I just want to give you a sense of what this. We're going to talk about this grid a lot. So let me start this idea. I'll just talk. I'll just talk through the. We'll come back to it and go through it. But I, I just want to set this up so it's in your heads. Let me see. So this is this uh, really uh, fantastically, I think, I think a great achievement um, in the last 10, 15 years of trying to understand systems in general. These are systems that are people made or naturally made uh, that have, again, these power law size distributions for maybe in this, uh, for lots of things, but in this case for disasters, right? So this is a, uh, and a very simple little model here of how to make a forest that does a good job with respect to lightning strikes, right? So, this is, so the forest is the system. There's some external environmental thing that's attacking the forest or there's a failure of some sort. You can imagine all sorts of other systems. Um, we'll get back to it, but this is our paradigmatic example is the, uh, the Death Star, right? So most of the time robust, but you get in the wrong spot or the right spot, depending on whose team you are and the whole thing explodes. So this is this notion of robust yet fragile. Right, lots of systems are like this. So this is something, uh, this one is very much like percolation, right? So the idea is this, this example here, this has got some design and then more in increasing design. And so the idea is you have some um, blank space like this, it's actually all dark and every white space is a tree. So you come along and you're gonna fill your forest in. So you get to design this one. This is not necessarily how things you know, work. It's a little toy model. You get to design this. And in the background is a lightning strike distribution, which is much more concentrated up here. And uh, it's a little, it has a longer tail out this way, but it's a Gaussian tail, right? So it's not, there's no power law stuff in there. It's a Gaussian. It's a little bit tighter this way than it is this way. What you're allowed to do is put down a tree and then run it. Let the lightning strike the whole thing and then see how much, on average, how much damage you have. Right? How, how much of the forest on average burnt. And then, so you do that, uh, and then you put down another tree, and you do it again. You put down another tree, and you do it again. And the design differences you go across here is you actually have no choice here. You just randomly put the trees down. So you're just gonna randomly put them down. So this is gonna work like percolation, because at some point, and for this, for these, for percolation on our square grid, it's a 50-50 thing, right? So once you get to, that's not actually true, I should be careful about that. But once you get to this half filled, roughly, then uh, the trees are going to connect up. There's going to be a giant component of trees. And so, and of course, once you're you know, to 90% or so, on, there's going to be a huge component. And if you hit that, right, if your lightning strike hits that, then all of it burns. Okay, so here's a case where you have two choices. So you, to add the next tree, you find a blank space and you add it there, test it, take that tree away, add it to somewhere else, test it. And they're both randomly chosen. So you, you, you choose the best location of two randomly chosen tree locations. Here, it's going to be D. This is a D squared um, uh, layout here of a matrix. So now you've got D, right? So 64, um, 64 by 64. This one, you have 64 choices. So you go to each, so you put one down, test it completely, like, you know, pretty bad. You know, you strike, you, you let the lightning run, you, you know, Thor or whatever. You let the lightning run, burn it all down, put all the trees back, do it again. And you do that for one location until you get some sense of on average how bad that is. And then you put it in another location again, randomly chosen. And for this case, you have 64 choices. And here you choose everywhere. So you always put in the best one, right? You always put in the best one. So you can see that the, they're very, um, uneven designs, and again, we'll go over this, but they're uneven kind of resulting structures. This is random, no design, it's a random thing. And this is the density of trees that gives you the best yield in that if lightning strikes this thing, you know, one, on average, one lightning strike for, for this one will leave the most number of trees as, as, as is possible, right? So we could put just, it's all black, we put one tree here. Lightning misses it most of the time. So we usually have one tree at the end of each forest fire. But of course, it's only one tree. So we try to add as many trees as we can until you know, we've connected this enough that just hitting one tree, you know, usually you're losing out. 
if, you, if this is all trees, every lightning strike destroys it, right? So there's an upper limit for sure. This case, you can see there's a, there's a little fire break has, has been made here, and it goes up to here. And there are little pieces broken here. Much clearer fire breaks here. Right? You've got much more design available to you. And, so, and as I said, this is the most dangerous place. So you put a little, you know, a little fire break around it, right? Just like when the spaceship is going to blow up, you shut up all the... All the holes get, you know, someone pushes a button, it's very dramatic. You know, this is the idea is you're closing things off. This is like geometric circuit breakers of <coughs> sorts, right? So if anything lands in here, it goes, boom, you know, it does burn all of it, right? This is a very simple forest fire model. Any lightning strike out here, it's game over, right? But this is the best one. Uh, uh, you know, this, this compares to this one in the sense that this number of trees, this actually will have the best yield afterwards. Right? So we could have less trees in here, but in terms of this design process, this is where it got to the maximum yield. After, on average, any lightning strike, even though this could go, it's most likely to happen up here, this is the forest that will have the best yield. And so you could see that you could add one here and add one here. That wouldn't change anything. But if you added a tree to any of this, then suddenly this is all open. Right? So you can't add any more. And this is because of randomness. We can't really you know, do anything more. But you see where we've been able to test it every time, there are no little isolated trees left. But very similar looking thing. So what's going, what we're going to argue with this is, you know, some modicum of design in, in how, or it doesn't have to be design, it could be just it's a tested system through evolution, bad things happening, uh, can lead to these very interesting, like this is a very low entropy system, right, that's very structured, Long way away from this, right? So this is often being used, at least, as a sort of a simple model for reality. But reality is full of structures like this. So this is highly optimized tolerance is the term here, hot models. Um, so it's highly optimized. And it's mostly tolerant. But when it goes wrong, it's, it has this robust yet fragile thing, right? Out here, you know, really bad. But mostly, it's going to go boom and make that noise. All right. So we'll talk a lot more about that in the next lecture. And uh, yeah, OK, all right.